Welcome everyone to another edition of Blooms for You. My cousin It here is really, really popping off now, looking amazing and such a pleasure to see on my patio. These blooms are for all of you that are watching this video. He is a great candidate that I can dedicate blooms to everybody that decides to watch this video, supporting me with a view because there's so many of them. And clearly when it comes to blooms for you, I am not able to mention everybody that I have on my list, but as the list progresses, I go down and down every time a bloom opens and those will be named today. In the meantime, Cousin It is doing a great job representing everybody that I want to say thank you for watching, for supporting and for commenting on my videos. So all these blooms, they will bloom for you for the foreseeable future. Now. It is winter, it's a little bit more touch and go with the blooms, especially when it comes to bud blast, which I've had in the recent weeks, but I have managed to get some gems to bloom out, which I would like to dedicate to individual viewers. So if you're so inclined, let's go and have a look-see as to what is in bloom, still in bloom, and whose names have come up. Thank goodness for this sunny day, <laughs> just in time. My Dendrobium Tetragonum Variety Giganteum has opened the next three buds right here and an additional little one over here. This was the cluster previously with this bloom here that has already failed. And now we have a similar pattern going on with the next set, which I would like to dedicate to Nan Guyen YouTube and Tasfia Art Academy to say thank you to the two of you for your support here on my channel. I still don't have a fragrance, even though I've got these blooms now in some sun, the temperatures are relatively cool. They're hovering around 16 degrees Celsius, so fragrance, yep, maybe this is one of the things about Dendrobium Tetragonum Variety Giganteum. It also needs a little bit of heat and not just sunlight. Never mind, they are gracing my indoor blooming alley, of which I am very, very grateful because the blooms kind of speak for themselves and they're lasting a super long time because of the cold temperatures. I normally get, let me be as precise as I can about this, spring. The warmer conditions were so long ago, I tend to forget, <laughs> but I normally get about 10 days out of the blooms, but I'm already over two weeks now on this cluster right here. So yeah, cooler temperatures works well for this one. Not all orchid blooms respond well to cooler temperatures, but this one actually does. Very, very funky. Very, very undendrobium-like if you were to just see the picture of the blooms and didn't see the rest of the plant. So I must say this is one of the orchids that has me absolutely thrilled because of its funky growth habit. It looks cool when not in bloom, and then when it blooms, it looks really, really cool. So for Nan Nguyen YouTube, Tasfia Art Academy, my four next flush of Dendrobium Tetragonum variety Giganteum blooms, they bloom for you to say thank you to both of you very, very much for your support here on my channel. Three blooms, can you believe it? Dendrobium antenatum, but oh my goodness, these three blooms are precious to me. And I am so relieved that I can dedicate them to Sunita Simple Rangoli because I was expecting a massive Dendrobium antenatum bloom spectacle. I had seven spikes on the go and I was so excited to be able to give a huge list of my supporters a thank you via a beautiful Dendrobium antenatum spectacle. It turns out that caterpillars had a better plan and decided they should ravish those spikes and make a meal out of them. Chewing blooms back, decimating spikes from the get-go. And let me tell you, I went on the hunt at night to see if I can see the little critters chomping away on my spikes and what was going on because every morning, there was a slight change to the appearance of my spikes. The blooms that were budding out, they had lost their horns and all that nonsense was going on. So me and my magnifying glass and my flashlight at night, we were on the hunt to no avail. Couldn't see anything except for the droppings 
later on the shelf. Day one, I lost, but I got three blooms to make it and look gorgeous. And these blooms are for you, Sunita Simple Rangoli. And let me tell you something, fighting for these three blooms, I was on a mission. <laughs> I was not going to be denied at least something. So they are for you to say thank you very much for your support, Sunita Simple Rangoli. Even if they're only three, they are super, super special and very close to my heart because they are perfect, even though they don't have the honeysuckle fragrance this time of year. But the entire orchid is doing really, really well. She is now pot bound and we are ready for the season of 2022 to get her up to strength. I only have the support around her now because of where she lives. Real estate is rather valuable here, <laughs> but yeah, no, she is finally pot bound. 2022, I'm expecting big things. And then I'm hoping that when the caterpillar issue should start again, I will be on top of it so that this orchid can shine with the amount of spikes that she is capable of producing. Thank you so much, Sunita Simple Rangoli, for your support on my channel. I hope that the new year has started off perfectly for you. Motivations and relaxations, my goodness. <laughs> yes, um, we are gonna get there. We're gonna get to the 10th bloom of my Cylogeny Lime Bay. This spike has gone on and on and on, and it has been over a year now that this orchid has been in bloom, which is one remarkable achievement for the orchid. Normally we enjoy our blooms for about 10 days to four weeks if we're lucky but this one just keeps going and going she's like a little energizer buddy you know the one with the duracell in it no complaints here whatsoever and she is looking gorgeous seeing as she has nothing to compete with regarding any controversial or adverse weather conditions right now the Sologeny lime bay is in her element the temperatures are perfect for her, the humidity is perfect, and that lime really, really shines through this time around. The contrast with the chocolate lip, it will never, ever get boring. Even though I have seen 10 blooms from this orchid throughout the entire year of 2021, never gets old, I love her. Now, the fragrance is not evident this time around. It is probably something to do with the temperature, the fact that they are cooler. So I do not have a dusty room fragrance near my workspace, which is where she lives. She lives very close to me. I don't smell her at all, but goodness me, she is looking right in her element with those colors. Lime Bay makes sense. This time of year, it's very, very obvious. The bloom has now been open for three days. I'm expecting another 10 days out of her. And the bud of bloom 11 is already tucked way in the back there. And I hope to get to 11 blooms. Continuing the cycle of this sequential bloomer. Sorry about the bopping in the wind there, but hey, this orchid gets harder and harder <laughs> to keep in the viewfinder the longer she gets. Minor little details, champagne problems for an orchid grower. So, <laughs> motivations, eh, relaxations. This Sologeny Lime Bay, bloom number 10, she blooms for you to say thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. So, very appreciated. I hope you're doing well and that the new year has started off perfectly for you. in your face to learn your pink brisht. I don't know if this is my 1.0, 2.0, maybe by now it's 3.0. I'm gonna get into that in another video because pink brisht seems to be quite popular in my Tolumnia collection, even though this is supposed to be pink beige. Oh well, I don't mind pink brisht, honestly. I mean, these pink blooms are so cute and I would like to dedicate them to Dixon Huang because I want to say thank you to you so very much for supporting my channel. And normally I try to double up with Tolumnia so I can get more viewers named and thank them more personally. But in this case, I'm going to make an exception because I do not believe in dedicating blooms that are not 99% perfect. Let's put it that way. As I am a hobby grower, I can't always get perfect blooms. 
climate conditions, etc. My blooms can come out a little bit. Well, let's just say the best blooms I have in my collection get dedicated and leave it at that. Now this little cluster of Tolumnias is for you, Dixon Juan, again, to say thank you so much for your support on my channel know that that is so very much appreciated. What I'm going to get into though is if you look at the bloom on the left, the far left, yeah she's looking at you like uh-huh I'm here but do you see something off with the bloom that is dead center? Do you see it? Do you see it? This is a first for me. Let me turn her around. You just keep turning her. Can you see it? I have two blooms in one. <laughs> now that's the first. I have never seen that before. I've been looking at them closely thinking, what if the stalk was just so tight, but it's not. Look, I've got all the top part that is normal, but they are fused. I've got two columns, two lips, not tulips, not the Holland things, no, two lips. <laughs> Kidding. Look at that. I didn't want to waste this spike because of one deformity. And personally, I think that blooms themselves, even if they're not 100% perfect, they have such a charm when they come out like this. I mean, that is quite the cluster. And I find that a Tolumnia bloom extraordinaire. And she is worthy of a little bit of attention, in my opinion. But Dixon Huang, my opinion is not what counts here. It is me to say thank you to you for your support on my channel. That is what counts. And via my Tolumnia Pink Brisht, I'm gonna have to figure out in another video, I will show you which one this is based on how many Pink Brishts I have and what I've given away on Pink Brisht in the past. <laughs> anyway, there she is with a little funky bloom. I love it. I'm, I'm mesmerized by this. And while I was trying to analyze this bloom, I was hoping I didn't break her, but I'm mesmerized. She's fine though. You see her other spike? Let me see if I can get you up there. Her other spike? Yeah, perfect. So this is just climatic stuff going on. Seeing as I'm taking my orchids in and out on sunny days, these Tolumnia buds have had to dealt with that. Anyway, I ramble. Dixon Huang, thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. I really, really appreciate it. Kim Robson, this is my Lelia Lundii, which I would like to dedicate to you to say thank you so much for your support on my channel. Little bit awkward, but I have one bloom here and you can see through the foliage in the back there's another bloom tucked away back there because, you know, why not make it complicated? Why not have all these buds open? Well, that's not how Lundii works, but here we are. I've got at least two blooms that I can dedicate to you, Kim Robson, to thank you so much for supporting me. She is so adorable. She should have a fragrance, but where she lives right now, She's not exuding any fragrance. Last year, I had a little hint of some sweet sugary substance that was a bit difficult to describe. It was just sweet and delicate and very, very pleasing. Floral, you know, the common kind of floral when we say, oh, that smells like a flower. A little bit on the sweet side, matching her structure. But she also sparkles in the sun with her petals and sepals. They have a little bit of a chrysaline effect. Super, super pretty. And this is a ridiculous Lelia. Can you believe it? Look at her. I've got buds coming here. One, two, three, four, five. And that's about it. But maybe this growth will also bloom. Pretty, huh? They bloom before the growth matures. I'm really happy I got her established in Lekka and self-watering because as you can see by her little climbing habit in the back here, she would do great on a mount. So this is making me very, very happy. It's not going to be a long-term solution. Eventually, I'll probably put her into some kind of a bowl. But how she's taken to this setup pleases me immensely. So yeah, Kim Robson, I've got two blooms on my Lelia Lundii for you. They've been open four days now. I would have liked to have all the buds open. 
But given the fact that the climate at the moment is a little bit iffy, I don't know if I'm going to have these buds blast. So I just took advantage and decided to film while the sun is shining to say thank you, Kim Robson, for your support on my channel via the blooming of my Lelia Lundii. Some made it through the bud blast. I cannot tell you how happy I am. It's quite the stressful time of year for me, but these have made it through and I am very, very happy that I could give them a name and say thank you to all of you for watching and supporting my videos. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Blooms For You. The next one is already underway. Some clips have already been filmed and some buds I'm still waiting to open. So fingers crossed, no bud blast. Otherwise, that really, really throws a wrench into my list. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Hope you're going to have yourself a beautiful day. I will attach a condition to that, though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.